I applied to the Rhode Island School of Design and uh, something I didn't know about before I got there was that one of the finest silversmiths in the world, really, uh, from Denmark, had just started teaching there, a man named John Pripp. And uh, I wound up being his first student. He was a man of very, very few words, and he just worked on a bench next to me. And when I needed to know something, I would go over and watch what he was doing. And every once in a while, I would ask him how to do something, and he'd go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like this, and he'd do it like this, and he'd go away. And uh, it left me an enormous amount of time to do my work. And uh, it was a very, it was just what I needed, a, a time with just working and no words. So I did that for two years. Got a degree in silversmithing, and then a really wonderful sculptor who lives in Connecticut, a man named Philip Grousman, connected me with the Fulbright people, and I wound up going to Italy, and uh, I proceeded to, uh, to make bronzes, and uh, we dragged them back to the United States on, on a train and, uh, and an airplane, and, uh, and started looking in New York for places to sell them, and wound up in the Cordier and Ekstrom Gallery, uh, where uh, Sarah Roby bought my, my pieces. It's very funny, I never really considered myself an artist per se. I made things and I was making them to solve a series of problems that I created really for myself. And one of them is that I wanted to really intimately understand the process of making bronzes from one end to the other. So over time, I wound up producing a, a lot of work uh, and uh, in a way the byproduct was these objects of art.